Servus, Mena, it's Red Pill Germany again. I have to make a confession. As I am a middle-aged man, I have almost no contact to young women these days anymore because I don't work in the education system or something like that. And whatever information I get about current trends and developments pretty much comes from the media that is mainstream and alternative media, of course. I started my channel seven years ago when my first-hand information was not as outdated yet as it is right now seven years later so i started looking what is going on with young women what do they want and how foolish is a society that will put their hope into this generation of young women in terms of carrying the economy and providing also for young families and to save our countries economically speaking that would require these young women to woman up and take a very high paying, high stress job uh, in the STEM fields, for example, and really go for that career that the second wave feminists fought so hard for them to go into. So in today's video, I want to share a study from Switzerland that I read recently. I read articles about it and I first had to chuckle and then I had to laugh out loud. And I thought to myself, I really have to share this on my channel. But before we begin, I briefly want to thank all my supporters and subscribers. Like, share and subscribe to my channels. Also, check me out on other social media platforms if you haven't done so far. Links are down below. And if you want to, you can help out my channel via Patreon or Subscribestar. So you're all probably familiar with the northern gender equality paradox. And this is really old news. And I talked about this years ago on my channel already. And the story is basically that in northern European countries, women are very um, empowered and they have all the options in life that they want. If they want to become a brain surgeon, society works overtime so that they become a brain surgeon, basically. But it turns out when you give women all the freedom and you don't put pressure on them whatsoever and you give them all the options, they choose to go into traditionally female fields such as working with children or in academia or um, working with people, um, care, work and all that stuff, but also working part-time so that they can have this um, work-life balance and also have a family. So now this study, this new study has been conducted at the ETH Zurich, the Eidgenössische Technische Hochschule there, the famous university. Two female professors wanted to solve the question why at this university where women are 60% of the students, so they're a clear majority among the students of that university, why they see this so-called leaky pipeline effect. And that means when you go up to a PhD level and to assistants and then to professors, you see more and more men and fewer and fewer women there. In this example at the ETH Zurich, only 24% of the professors are women. So then these two professors conducted a study among the students there to answer this question. And uh, the one professor is a economist in her 70s. So that means she was there when um, all that stuff happened in the 60s and 70s. She was a young woman back in the day. Second wave feminism, burning bras and all that stuff. And the other one is a middle-aged woman in her 40s and she is a sociologist, I believe. And the older woman, the uh, economist, she said when she saw the result of her study of the questionnaires that came back, it really knocked her out of her shoes or in German, es hat sie umgehauen. That means she was absolutely surprised by these results. She couldn't believe it. Bear in mind, she's in her 70s and feminists from that generation, they think that women want to become professors and they want to have a stressful career and it's just the patriarchy that's holding them back. This is what they really still believe, even though it's 2023, but they live in a different world, they still believe that for real. So the first thing that we see here is once again, is that women are gravitating, of course, more to these social studies. They avoid STEM fields. You see these classical women fields like psychology, veterinary sciences and English and these things in the 80s, in the 80% ranges for women there. 
Now, if you look at engineering, math, physics, computer science, and so on, uh, it's more like 10 to 20%, obviously. And as Switzerland is also a society typical for Central Europe, where yeah, nowadays women have absolute equality, maybe even a little bit more than equality. I would say they are promoted and empowered um, more than 50-50, I would say. So this result for a prosperous, stable, peaceful society like that, where uh, people can do whatever they want without any pressure, so to speak. Um, yeah, this is just um, reminiscent of this Norse or Scandinavian gender equality paradox, which is not a paradox at all. It just means that um, if you give women all the choices, they do what they like to do and they like to do what they traditionally want to do. And that is not engineering and physics, obviously. But if you go to a developing country such as India or Pakistan or wherever and uh, you have smart or high IQ women, uh, what do they want? They see, well, I can help my family if I get a high paying job. So they tend to do that. But once these societies become prosperous, this changes and you will see that women don't want to do this anymore because they do it out of necessity or because they think it's their duty or they can um, improve their living conditions drastically. But once these living conditions are already great and they just want to have some coffee and bake cookies and decorate the house and have one child. So that is old news. But what is a little bit new in my opinion at least is that they asked the women why that is. And the answer or the way that the answer was phrased then is what knocked this 70 something year old professor out of her shoes when she read that in all the answers to the survey. And that answer is basically that women do not avoid STEM fields or these stressful uh, careers because they feel discriminated against, but in truth, because they just don't want to. And this was genuinely something new for this professor. And she probably has never read this answer or gotten this answer in such a blunt and direct way. So she found that the women, these few women that go into the STEM fields, into the so-called hard scientific fields like physics and math and engineering, that they have a different uh, look on family life and career life or they put their priorities differently. They, even if they had children, they still want, at some point at least, again, work full-time in their field, which in my opinion makes sense because um, you don't um, normally uh, force yourself through an engineering studies degree or through a physics degree and then say, well, I just want to stay at home. I mean, of course, I want to stay at home too, but you know what I mean. If you just want to graduate and have some university degree to meet a husband there, uh, yeah, then you don't have to do physics. You know, you can get an English degree. That's much less stress. But that is just a very small group, of course. The majority of women go to these uh, sociology or liberal arts fields. And these women then, they don't want the stressful career. They want to work part time. Um, the um, authors of the study said that these women have a more traditional um, outlook on family. Uh, I would, mm, I hope you don't misunderstand this word, but when they say part time work, that is already traditional listen for them or if they if these young women say I want to have kids and then my husband should be the uh, sole or a majority breadwinner these uh, feminist authors they would call that traditionalism in my opinion well that's not really traditionalism that's just uh, being lazy maybe or something true traditionalism uh, well you need a little more than just staying at home for that okay let's just say that uh, that goes beyond the purpose of this video now but this is the word they choose, traditionalist. So to sum up this point again, there are different kinds, different types of women. One kind of woman goes into the hard STEM fields and these women want to work full time, but they're not very many. The majority of women go into these uh, quote unquote easy fields or qualitative fields, liberal arts, etc. And these women, they never intended to work full time later. And in fact, they say quite openly, I want to find a husband. I want to find a man 
who does that for me, who is the breadwinner and I don't need to work. I just need to find a rich or a high income husband. And they clearly stated that in their answers. And that is what knocked this professor basically out of her shoes when she read that. I mean, just imagine a 70 something year old, uh, old feminist professor and uh, they fought so hard against the establishment, against the patriarchy. And now in the year 2023 she conducts a study in order to find out and uh, I really find it kind of cute how naive she is and how she lives in her own bubble but uh, she actually conducts a scientific survey a scientific study in order to find out why still only 24 percent of the professors at this uh, respectable um, university with a great reputation in Switzerland ETH Zurich are women and the outcome is that the vast majority of female students just wants to find a rich husband and then bake cookies decorate the home and have one or maybe two children yeah so that's the sad reality why sad this is my opinion right now well of course um, these women they don't want to have many children they don't want to have true traditional families with five or 12 children but at the same time they also don't want to contribute in the business sector or in science or financially or in any other meaningful way to the development and to, to the well-being or economic growth of our societies. They do not want to be an engineer that builds the next supercar or what have you. They just want to be left alone. They're basically checking out of society. That is what that is. I mean, it's semi-checking out, okay? They're not um, sitting in their basements playing computer games. Yes, uh, they work part-time and have one child. But if that is what the average person, what the average family looks like, well, then our societies are doomed because... In this scenario, we will not have the reproductive power in order to maintain our numbers. And at the same time, we do not have people who do the work that is required to run a society. But before I come to the end, I want to mention one more interesting aspect of the study. And uh, the participants of the survey were asked if they experienced themselves true discrimination or if there was some roadblock because of the fact that they're women um, in their studies or in their career or what have you. And um, many of them said that, yes, there were moments where I felt discriminated against. But from the other answers that, and this is how these surveys are constructed, you don't ask about a point in one question. You have five questions in order to find out if they just think that this is the case or if it's really the case. This is how you try to do that. I mean, this is a standard way that these tests are designed so you can find this out. And what this professor said, based on the answers she got from her studies, that is false. That she literally said that the only way she can explain the answers she got to the survey is that these young women, they have internalized this narrative of discrimination against women so much that they imagine discrimination. Just, just um, let this go through your head one more time. A 70-something-year-old feminist professor openly says in an article, in an interview about a study she did, that she takes it from her own scientific findings that young women these days imagine discrimination or experience of discrimination against them based on their womanhood. And this is because society tells them over and over that they're being discriminated against when in fact this is not true. So they make things up basically. An old second wave feminist professor admitted this right now in a newspaper article. I, I find this worth sharing I have to say. It comes a little late, but at least um, this kind of admission came out. Yeah, so I wonder how um, Frau Osterloh, that is her name, looks back on her career and on her struggle against patriarchy. And, uh, you know, I don't know if she's really that radical, but I'm sure she is a feminist, of course. So I really wonder how that uh, makes her 
think about her own life and the um, dedication and all the work at her department throughout her scientific career at the university, you know, if that changes the way she um, looks back on her own life. Anyway, let me know what you think about this and also if you have found a study recently that goes in a similar direction or um, sheds new or also old light on this um, complex, on this field of topics ranging from family formation, um, academics, career or uh, the glass ceiling, uh, pay gaps and all this nonsense. Have a great day. Servus, Kameraden.